Hello. Welcome back to another episode of Presumed Innocence Season 1 Episode 3 Recap. Biggest Twist. The Guilty Plea and Seven Other Major Reveals. A Summary of the Contents. Rusty's personal and professional challenges intensify in Presumed Innocent Episode 3, with additional evidence pointing to him as the primary suspect. Detective Rodriguez uncovers prejudice in the case, pointing to a more intricate murder mystery than originally imagined. As the hunt for truth intensifies, shocking photographic evidence emerges, including a snapshot of Rusty's son, propelling the case forward. Presumed Innocence's third episode has some intriguing new revelations concerning the central murder case, as well as an explanation of what could happen if Rusty pleads guilty. Apple TV Plus as Presumed Innocent, created by David E. Kelly, follows prosecutor Rusty Savage's personal and professional problems after becoming the leading suspect in the death of a former colleague. By keeping the killer's identity ambiguous, the Apple TV Plus miniseries challenges viewers to become armchair detectives and solve the primary murder mystery. After Presumed Innocence Episodes 1 and 2 laid the basis for the overarching murder mystery, Season 3 offers key pieces of evidence that still point to Rusty, implying he may have committed the crime. However, other narrative twists indicate that, while Rusty has made some serious mistakes in the past, he is incapable of executing the heinous murder. As the show unfolds, a few more suspects surface, implying that the murder mystery is significantly more intricate and multi-layered than it appears. 1. Rusty reveals that he visited Carolyn the night she was murdered. Rusty's visit makes him even more suspicious. After getting a message from a stranger that read, You were there. I saw you, Rusty says, his anxiety rising. When his wife, Barbara, asks what's going on, he admits where he was the night Carolyn was murdered. He informs her that he visited Carolyn's house the night she died, prompting further suspicions about his involvement in the killing. The person who contacted Rusty also sent him another message on his phone, inviting him to meet them at Damien Silos at 3 p.m. 2. Detective Rodriguez realizes Guardia and Molto are biased against Rusty. His independent investigation may benefit Rusty in the long run. In Episode 3 of Presumed Innocent, Detective Rodriguez pays a visit to the prosecutors, Guardia and Molto, with the hopes of sharing insights and learning fresh information about the case. However, she quickly realizes that Guardia and Molto are not managing the case to bring the murderer to justice, they are more likely to play a political game by arresting Rusty for the crime, regardless of whether he is involved. She even confronts the two for their biased approach and for failing to examine the possibility that Liam Reynolds was responsible for the murder. Given Rodriguez's commitment to discovering the truth behind the murder rather than formulating her own ideas, it appears that she will assist Rusty in locating some key clues later in the series. Guardia loses his mind when she accuses him of not thinking clearly and allowing his political beliefs to cloud his judgment. As a result, she was escorted from his office. Given Rodriguez's commitment to discovering the truth behind the murder rather than formulating her own ideas, it appears that she will assist Rusty in locating some key clues later in the series. 3. Michael, Carolyn's son, took pictures during Rusty's visit, proving that Rusty was present on the night of her murder. Despite his curiosity about who is giving him the messages, Rusty is initially wary of visiting Damien Silos and discovering the person's identity. Even Raymond advises against visiting the individual. Rusty's curiosity soon gets the best of him, and he drives to the spot around 3 p.m. To his astonishment, he discovers Carolyn's son, Michael, there, who confronts him, claiming he saw him at his mother's house on the night of her death. When Rusty questions him, Michael admits that he shot images and recordings of him with Carolyn. Realizing that the photographic evidence could help him locate new leads in the case or prove his innocence, Rusty instructs Michael to either hand over the footage from the night or submit it to relevant law officials. Michael admits he has already given it away and confronts Rusty, claiming he was the only one present that night. Rusty responds by stating that he was also present at the scene the night of the murder. 4. Kyle, Rusty's son, asks if he intends to plead guilty. Kyle's question makes Rusty wonder what his children think of him. During a family dinner, Rusty's daughter, Jaden, wants him to reveal facts about the case because she and her brother will learn about it from other sources. 
Rusty accepts and begins telling her about all the circumstantial evidence against him, including Carolyn's pregnancy and his visit to her home the night of the murder. Kyle surprises everyone by interrupting and asking whether he has considered his appeal. When Rusty asks what he's talking about, Kyle encourages him to plead guilty. Rusty is taken aback by his son's bizarre proposal and asks him why he should plead guilty to a crime he did not commit. Kyle defends himself, claiming that if he pleads guilty, he would avoid a life sentence and would just serve eight years in prison for manslaughter. This makes Rusty question if Kyle believes he actually killed Carolyn. To his relief, Kyle approaches him and apologizes, stating that all he fears is that Rusty will lose the case. 5. Guardia encourages Molto to gather compelling evidence for the murder. Guardia notices Molto's intentions are not in the right place. Later in the episode, when Guardia and Molto meet again, Guardia informs Molto that he is attempting to get back at Rusty rather than focus on solving the case. Molto disputes Guardia's charges, but it appears that Guardia is correct about him. Instead of addressing Molto, Guardia urges him to obtain compelling evidence that Rusty committed the crime, as their existing evidence is only circumstantial. Guardia realizes they'll need more strong evidence before admitting Rusty committed the crime, but Molto is overwhelmed by his hatred for Rusty. 6. Raymond refuses to believe Liam Reynolds had anything to do with Carolyn's murder. Rusty explains how evidence in the Bunny Davis case can help them win the case. When Rusty and Raymond search Carolyn's residence for more evidence, Ray confronts Rusty and urges him to stop trying to locate the contaminated semen specimen from the Bunny Davis case. He stresses that if they suggest a new suspect in the case, they will be required to present one. And if they fail to deliver, Rusty will automatically become the leading suspect. Rusty, on the other hand, advises Ray that the prosecution would use the most graphic images of Carolyn's murder to persuade the jury to rule against him. The previously disregarded evidence from the Bunny Davis case appears to be Rusty's sole solid lead. Therefore, he must investigate it regardless of the consequences. The photos from the crime scene and the photographic proof of him at her house on the night of the murder would elicit an emotional response from the jurors. To win the case, Rusty must prove that someone other than himself was there at the scene that night. The previously disregarded evidence from the Bunny Davis case appears to be Rusty's sole solid lead. Therefore, he must investigate it regardless of the consequences. 7. Rusty recalls becoming emotionally attached to Carolyn and explains why he cannot be her killer. Detective Rodriguez shows up at Rusty's office to inquire about his relationship with Carolyn. When she asks whether their relationship was motivated by love or lust, Rusty replies that it was both. Shen then asks him when he first became emotionally attached to Carolyn, Rusty reacts by saying that, despite the fact that people in his business avoid becoming emotionally concerned in criminal cases, he once saw Carolyn hugging a young girl prior to her court appearance. Carolyn's ability to empathize with a young child despite working in an area where emotions are frequently dismissed drew Rusty in.